Hello there, and welcome to the value of everything. So, how do we create free food with capitalism? This is not going to be easy. I will show you that blockchain governments can be a little bit on the easy side, but when we try and do it with free market enterprise, it does become quite hard. This isn't going to happen without a lot of hard work, time expended, and plenty of fiat currency. Okay, you're probably thinking, well, you have already failed in your task, but what we are trying to do is create a working model where all the hard work is done at the beginning, but then there is a self-maintained, autonomous food source which will be able to provide abundance in the future. So to kick everything off we need to organize a group of people to purchase a lot of land. Maybe crowdfunding could kick off this project. Local investors would create an easier system just for sheer logistics but I will go into that a little bit later. There should be some kind of incentive for these crowdfunders as well. Okay, some people may not be too familiar with this, but I have devised a system in which people can create autonomous ecosystems using the blockchain distributed ledger and having a currency which is based upon a moral pursuit. It's uh, broken down into four steps. Firstly, find a virtuous pursuit for humanity. Secondly, have an idea of how it could be sustained on a autonomous level. Then get a metric to calculate a beneficial rate of change. And lastly, and probably most importantly, devise a preventable measure to stop metric manipulation. So with my little rule book of how to create a virtuous ecosystem with a food coin distributed value exchange, we must firstly find a virtuous pursuit. So that would be to create food without the incentive of profit. It must be autonomous and sustainable, which is quite complex in itself because we need to work out how to get the automated robots to sow the seed, grow, harvest, clean and self-repair. There may need to be some kind of job offer board for these food coins, which may need to be hard coded onto the source code. Also, not to create too much complexity, but we could have each one of these tasks broken into another value coin mechanism where you would have a value coin for watering, for fertilizer, processing, distributing fairly, preventing, reselling, treating pests, and securing the land and machines. So if you are a fairly ripe age and from the UK, you may be fairly aware of allotments which were handed out by the government. It would be this kind of process by the source code itself. So the miners would work hard to produce plenty of goods on their allotted land. Also, it would be advantageous if there was a reward for cooperation and a degree of automation, but that may be covered in the food coin distribution anyway. All right, next up is the metric to award these food coins. So we could have it purely based upon abundance, so tons and tons of food production. The problem with that is we may end up with a load of potatoes. So there could be more distribution for the miners who can meet the preferences of the people who are receiving the food produce. Or we could look into the amount of waste which is happening as a consequence of this food production as a metric to work out whether the food is being fully utilized and distribute the coins on a utility scale. 
So let the miners choose what they can grow and if they can fill the desires, so produce the most of food with the highest demand versus the biggest yield, then they will be distributed the most food coins. So I'm putting up a theory which is to compete against the supermarket chains and the farming organizations but obviously if we were in a country where resources were very limited then we could build source code food distribution value coins which could meet the population's hunger needs so going back to the metric itself it could be purely based upon field desires with least waste, which would be the supermarket competitive version. Or we could fill beyond energy and nutritional requirements with the highest yield. I would like to think of creating something which would be the balance of the two, some kind of fine tuning there. Okay, so now we're going to look into food security. This is a little bit complicated because there is a number of aspects to consider when this has been created, not only for just purely the farm, the machinery, but if you think that some population is connected to the grid of this food coin distribution ledger and a competitive market knocks it out, then there is a problem of potentially people ending up hungry. So it may sound a little bit technical at first, but there will be reasons behind why I mention these things. It would be advantageous to have a system written to say that once a miner is in the blockchain or the source code, then they cannot be removed unless sold out from the food coin ledger. People should be allowed to pass freely through the land. However, if there was any damage made to the crops or machinery, then there should be some kind of security measure in place. Maybe there are low cost alternatives like flying drones, which could be based inside another value coin mechanism. However, that is for a entire new episode. Okay, so one of the more important sides of security is how would you make this food coin distribution fair so there must be some kind of processing center where the miners are rewarded for product quality and quantity i guess this processing center would be partly virtual and physical We've mentioned the minor side of distribution, but also there will be the side of somebody who possesses a food coin. They would be on the receiving end of free food. Now, depending on how you would like to adapt the source code, it could be programmed to not just fill the order of the first level of the coin. This is another little theory that I'm trying to put forward here is where you'd have a number of different subcategories of coins. So you would have, say, like the platinum coin, where you would always be served first. You could have a gold coin, where you're pretty much 90% sure that your order will be filled. Then you could have a silver coin, where pretty much uh, roughly 70% of all orders are filled. And, say, bronze fourth. So... 40% of all your orders are filled and go down in different gradient levels. Maybe there'll be a surplus of potatoes and all of those orders get filled all the way down. However, where there is, say, pineapples, that really only gets filled to number one, two, and a little bit of third place, which would be the silver members. So this is a fairly interesting mechanism where the market would adjust by increasing price. We just increase the distribution funnels to fill out the secondary levels of desires and needs. Going back to the job board or bulletin board, we may also require a desire board which outlines what our weekly groceries would like to be. So the important question to ask is what if not enough food has been produced? So there's two situations here which arise. Firstly, you may not 
necessarily have all foods produced to the maximum potential, but say more exotic foods which require a lot more care probably will not be produced as much and will not be able to be filled down to say the third level, say silver and bronze levels. However, when it comes to more of the sustainable foods like your rice and potatoes, that should be met to most lines of the food coins. You don't necessarily have to fully depend on your food coins. You can also just use bitcoins to purchase food as well. And I would imagine that there would be some kind of meshing, especially at the starting days, to purchase any of the items that you are falling short of. So you can always go back into the free market to meet your desires. One of the important things about distribution is being close proximity to these centers. There could be two different ways in which the distribution could work. One could be where everybody goes to the distribution store. Maybe there's the first level, the platinum level store, then the second level store. Or you could have a drone distribution where the actual drones fly out and drop down, deliver your food and groceries. One important thing about distribution is to work out how much to allot per coin holder or to the certain levels of the coin's value. Where I mentioned that, so you've got the first level, the platinum coin. Maybe you've got a silver, which would be like a third level coin. So there needs to be a calculation in the source code to devise how much would be allotted or percentage rate of the foods which have been produced would be allotted to the certain levels of coin holders, which is very important for fairness of distribution. There are also some other little issues, say if you do have the platinum coin and you get all the best goods and then you try and resell them, that can obviously, that does create some black market opportunities for the platinum holders. I'm not 100% sure whether we should or the source code should allow that to happen or there should be certain penalties to be devised for that. If you do put in penalties, obviously that you have to work out a system to adjudicate it. So trade is a fairly complicated thing, especially if we are looking at the entanglement of trades which could happen between the miners, the coin holders, and obviously the outside free market. We also have an issue in terms of the miners and the source code purchasing and acquiring too much land, so there does need to be countermeasures which stop this from happening. I'm just going to try and tackle a few of these scenarios now because obviously we have the ever acquiring source code. Some source codes do need to fail and we do need a situation where one is going to be better than the other. So we do not want to have some fairly good miners inside a source code to just rot and die away. We do need some kind of transfer and trade system that happens between the miners and the source code. So a free market enabler needs to kick in. Before we look into how to limit this virus source code, which is taking up the land and using all these miners to produce this ever-ending amount of produce, we just need to look into how does it all start. So obviously we'll begin with people purchasing food coins in exchange for a currency that can purchase land. So this may be fiat currency. It may be bitcoins or any other money which could be used to acquire land. Now, for the purposes of this thought experiment, it's probably best just to stay within the realms of bitcoins just for the purposes of money being assigned on a digital accounting ledger. Maybe it begins with crowdfunding where people are trying to put into a funding source which will acquire a certain block of agricultural land. Baked into the price would be the cost of machinery, the seeds, the ongoing maintenance of the machinery and the ongoing watering of the crops and all the maintenance that goes into that and the distribution as well. So there has to be a fairly large sum of money way beyond the land value to kickstart the project. 
Now, most likely, if you're the first kids on the block doing this, it's probably going to come to an extreme amount of an expense for not much in terms of yield. However, there is some incredible benefits at the same time. If you are into designing machinery or structures and systems in which an automated farming process could work, then you could use that model and try and sell another Kickstarter project to another area. And maybe there is some kind of beneficial return for you doing that, or you could do it on a charitable basis. So the blockchain or the food chain network has got some money in its accounting ledger. Again, this could be up to all of the crowd funders to make a majority decision on what land to acquire. There could be a number of options which could be put forward to the crowd funders to pick. When I say crowd funders, these are also the people who are possessing the food coins. Potentially, there needs to be some kind of democratic voting system which lays within the blockchain itself. There will be a apportioned vote in accordance to the gradient of the food coin that you've purchased from platinum to bronze. I guess you would get a number of people who would be doing some research in the local area just off their own backs. They could just surf the internet and look at a few farmyards which are up for sale and put it onto the forum for this vote. The food coin owners would sift through all of the options and select the one which they prefer. This is a particularly funny moment because you're going to most likely going to find somebody who is not too tax savvy in terms of virtual technology being contacted by some automated robot. So the blockchain food coin ledger would send out a letter offering bitcoins or maybe it will exchange its bitcoins in for fiat currency to purchase the land of the farmer. And the farmer's going to go, oh my God, what is this? Please excuse my poor rendition of a farmer's accent there. So there may be a little bit of haggling and maybe within the code you need to have some kind of uh, metrics in terms of haggling for prices. If there is a preference range, then you could have a weighted average of all of the voted options which were there. If the uh, the price that it was used to acquire one farm is too much, then it can move on to the second ranged voted land and make an offer for that and gradually increment the offer until it finds the price discovery point between what the farmer would like to sell it for and what the source code chain would like to purchase it for and therefore an acquisition is made. Okay, now the hardest part begins here. With the money that was left over from purchasing the land, you would now need to make acquisitions for machinery. Also, potentially, because it's the first time and probably all the robotics haven't been designed to have a fully automated farm, leveraging off a job bulletin board would be highly preferable. Now, on this job bulletin board, obviously, they'll try and put some free jobs. If anybody's got some time to help out on the farm who have purchased some food coins, then maybe they are willing to do it for free. However, you may need to loosen up the food coin network a little bit more and offer food coins for exchange of work on the land. Also, within the blockchain network itself, there needs to be some kind of structure matrix of different processes that need to be acquired at certain times. So I begin with sourcing money, then begin with acquiring land, and then there would need to be certain processes beyond this point. Now, Unfortunately, I'm no agricultural expert, I'm no farmer, but you would probably need certain things purchased in different orders. You would need certain work to be done at certain times, and this is all dependent on the seasons as well. So a matrix structure within the source code would need to be designed for just-in-time management purposes. All right, now we are going to insert the miners. 
For this, I would like to use the analogy of the Apple App Store. So if you are usually aware of the word miner for somebody who's digging for coal underneath the ground, this is a general term which we use for Bitcoin mining to extract the currency from the source code. Okay, so the miner is looking around to see which source code has got the best system which will meet the people's needs and also meet the miner's needs as well because the miner is going to be in the position at some point to be selling the food coins which it has been awarded for producing the goods. So just one thing to remember, obviously, a miner is going to be fairly interested in a high value food coin distribution ledger. I'll just try and use another analogy here. So say if you had a amazing sports star, he is looking for a new team to sign to. They wouldn't choose just some very low league status team to join. They, even though it was offering the greatest amount of money, they would be always trying to choose the biggest club that could serve the biggest product. So not only the customers can be rewarded, he can be rewarded himself. There's this very big incentive measure for giving a good end product. So when a miner signs up to one of these, say, app stores, they're going to have to make sure that it's a viable source code which will last for the future. Also, another very important part to this is that the miner will most likely have some extreme contract bindings for it not to ever leave, for it not to be traded out without the committees or the source codes agreement up front. Now, just before I start, obviously, we have to look at the marketplace of the miners so initially, there's going to be a fantastic gulf of miners. There will literally be no miners in the world whatsoever. So therefore, there'll probably be fairly light contract rulings. But as time progresses and people try to set up a number of different mining, farming, autobots, then the contract agreement would weigh in the favor of the blockchain ledger. So you're probably thinking to yourself, why are these contracts so important? There is a very credible threat in which the source code could just crumple from one day to the next. Now, just to note that the food coin most likely will be freely traded. So on some good occasions, the food coin will be worth a lot of value and a lot of miners will be signing up. But there also could be a collapse in the food coin market. There could be certain seasonal factors, weathers, which could happen, uh, some kind of cataclysm which would affect the food coin network for it to be devalued quite rapidly. Now, this is a very credible threat. And what you would not want to happen is all the miners who were free agents to work within the confines of the blockchain just to pick up their equipment and just move on to another successful blockchain chain network. Remember, one of the most beautiful things that potentially could happen in the future is that people just give up on trying to seek a profit motive from these autobots and just let them self-crop, self-maintain, self-clean, and just let them work within their own means so that there isn't really this key profit driver which is going off in the background. So depending on how the source code is set up, once the miner is inserted, there has to be potentially some kind of ruling as to when it could be sold or traded outside of the blockchain ledger. It's almost become an asset of the blockchain itself. Now, a obvious counter to this would be is that if I had set up a load of mining bots into a blockchain which was being fairly unsuccessful and the currency was being devalued, I would obviously not really care about the miners anymore and I would just let it just go to scrap and it would fall apart. I wouldn't do any of my own personal maintenance on the bots and it would go to waste pretty quickly. 
Now, it almost seems like we're running some kind of business here. So at this point, I would say that probably it would be best that the blockchain can seize the miners' assets to sell them to the market. Once the blockchain has sold the miners' infrastructure, then they would in turn compensate the miner itself. Obviously, there would need to be some kind of fine print in terms of when this can be carried out by the blockchain. You could definitely use the metric of production to say that, say, if the miner is now producing a lot less than what it once was, and it's a lot beyond seasonal factors, then they will have access to sell off the equipment. Now, this also extends to say if the miner owner goes to the bot and tries to take it off the land, you potentially may need also security to prevent this from happening. And even for the miner owner to go onto the land and even potentially vandalize its own equipment. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here as well is I'm painting a picture of failure, which is quite important. If we're not quite sure of what happens with the blockchain in terms of failure, then we will find ourselves going into a much more disastrous phase once this is set up. The um, the reason why the contracts are very important is obviously you just got to think of who's on the receiving end of this. There may be some fairly poor people who really cannot afford too much and they are really depending on this food coin to provide them with all the sustenance that they require. Okay, so let's just examine the ultimate failure of the blockchain Let's say the currency is in free fall. There has been a natural disaster which has occurred on the land. What happens in this example? So obviously the metric would kick in. It will be reading that the miners are producing a lot less than what they were. The contract bindings would start to click at that point as well. Then the fire sale of all the assets would occur straight away. And you potentially even may have at this situation the currency going up a little bit. And obviously, once it declares that the entire farm is really underproductive, every single bot on the entire land is underproductive by, say, more than 30% or 50%, whatever management that needs to be required here, then the stage of the fire sale happens. And then all of the assets can be sold off the land. Until finally the land gets sold and we get every food coin being reimbursed or in exchange for the market prices in bitcoins for the land and all of the equipment. Okay, another hole you may be seeing here. What about the blockchain crowdfunders or the owners of the blockchain get together, get all of these lovely miners to go on the land and then they pour a load of crap on the land and then they have the opportunity to sell all of the assets for a nice tidy sum and they in advance to this purchase a load of food coins so that they know that they will be on the receiving end of all of this mining equipment value that's been sold at a fire sale price. Now, there is one simple way, and it's a little bit tricky as well how this would work, but you could apportion only one food coin to one person. But this may have problems in expanding the capabilities of the blockchain farming network. But it definitely is a solution to that fire cell problem and it is a good preventable measure to stop a black market trading system to operate with a profit seeking incentive. You could potentially envisage a world where miners are looking for these defrauding miners who own more than one of these food coins. Once they find them, then they can receive the food coin to quickly resell it onto the market. So, yeah, there is definitely a way in which that could work, but this will not be an expensive enterprise. Okay, so other things to point out here as well is that miners could be on contract terms for, say, four years. 
and they are binding but they can't move out unless they are purchased out of the blockchain network by another blockchain network like the analogy of a football team purchasing a player and transferring in that asset obviously that's an entirely different market just a interesting way in which you can solve the disruptive owners of the blockchain to prevent them from sabotaging the miners is that when a crisis of production happens across the mining board you could have only the miners having the option to purchase the food coins. So there could be an embargo on anybody else purchasing the food coins other than the assigned miners. So if there was a situation where there had to be a selling of all of the land and all of the assets, then the miners would try to stump up a lot of cash to purchase a lot of the food coins at that point because they would be in the knowledge that the food coins would be eventually converted into the full value of all of the land and the mining equipment that they used to possess before the production crisis. At least the poor food coin owners would also benefit from this situation because they would be, say, rewarded back with bitcoins and then they can purchase into another alternative food coin blockchain distributed food provider. So we cannot look over the mechanism of an insurance provider to protect the miner and also to protect the poor man who possesses the food coin. If a miner was seen to purposely lower its productivity, then there should be some kind of rulings to allow the blockchain to take over the equipment. As I keep on going over this, I really re-emphasize the fact that failure is probably one of the most important factors to look into here, even more so than success in some ways, because you really do not want to be riding something that can seem to be fairly successful, but then could be fairly disastrous in terms of creating something like famine. Now let's turn this on its head and instead of having a failure of the blockchain technology, let's say that the blockchain technology was getting really successful and it was ever acquiring more and more land. What would be the natural stabilizers of a blockchain that acquires more and more land without the necessary need for the productive goods? Okay, so we're looking at a natural market economy and there has been basically abundance that has been created. Now, when people are given an abundance of something, they usually are going to retract the amount of spending which would be entering into that marketplace. There may be certain rulings in which a food coin could be split into smaller denominations. If this does occur, then there will be less so and less so of an unlikelihood that people will be using bitcoins to acquire more of these food coins because of the inflation of the food coin supply. There we have it, a natural market stabilizer. You even potentially could have some very weird scenario where production was getting so good on the land that less land was being required, so land would be sold and bitcoins would be distributed back for the apportioned foo coins that you possessed. Okay, now I'm going to take you to the final phase, which will be crop harvest and a little bit of distribution. So we have the first yield of crops. Hallelujah! As wonderful as this stage would be, I would imagine the crop yield would be so pitiful in comparison to all of the hard work, effort and fiat currency that was put in originally. That be said, I would imagine that people would be fairly impressed to see that something was working and I would imagine at this stage there would be a certain demand for food coins based upon their potential. 
Okay, now this is an interesting phase because we're looking at the distribution of food coins themselves. Would the source code need to have a certain limit of the amount of food coins which would be released? Or would there be a static or a fixed amount of food coins that would be released like Bitcoin's 21 million? Okay, so there is a incredible amount of factors which are going into the mix here. It all depends on how much is being yielded from a particular food coin. It depends on how much the fiat currency is being inflated or depending on whether it's being pegged against bitcoins itself, which may be a fairly stable currency by then. Obviously, we want to have people having the ability to make purchases for food coins themselves. So if you limit or restrict the number which people can purchase, then you will have some kind of black market which would ensue. So I like to stay within the confines of a cooperative virtuous structure, say the the blockchain structure whereby people always have the opportunity to access this source of food which can create certain amounts of abundances for people and negate the profit-seeking greed fear side as much as possible. Okay, so then when a miner has completed the harvest of its crop, it will most likely go to a loading distribution center where the food sources will be measured and potentially even there may be certain systems put in place where the sorting can happen, where cleaning and other different food refinement can occur. Once the measurements and the quality of the goods has been acquired, then food coins will be distributed back to those miners. Those miners then can go to an exchange market to change the food coins back into bitcoins. Also, anybody who possesses a food coin themselves will be looking at the blockchain distributed ledger to note how much a food crop will be awarded to them at this round. Any shortfalls will require them to go to a conventional supermarket. So at this point, I have demonstrated how free food can be produced and distributed to you by the mechanism of a blockchain network. As you can tell, this is all theoretical thinking. So if you do see any potential flaws and you see any ways to improve my methodology of thinking, then please do add some comments below. If we can create a sustainable food source that isn't pulled by profit motives and can last our lifetime, then the unlocking of potential from this is incredible. Remember, this is the dream goal. We want the miners to receive food coins, but then because the food coins are not really worth that much, they don't really get distributed anymore, but the miners are still working on an autonomous level to produce food. This is the ultimate sweet spot. It might seem far-fetched that people have released these bots to work hard and not get anything in return. But when you think of how organisms start to work, there is selfless things which occur, which doesn't seem to be understood, yet it is known that the life wouldn't exist without it. This releasing of an autonomous cell is the beginnings of a new evolution. Imagine the amount of free time that could be spent into the arts or our creative pursuits or even, say, further production into a means that we don't even quite understand yet. If there is one thing that I'd like to grab away from this is just to think in terms of permaculture. Think when you look inside your fridge, or when you look over at a farm, how this all could be created on some autonomous level which wouldn't require the profit motive and really pushes humanity into a different direction, which isn't solely about getting by from day to day, 
but really is pursuing our ultimate goals of knowledge and virtue. Thank you very much for your time. I'll just leave you with one little thought. Remember, we are what we eat. So it does really even boil down to how we farm as well. The profit motive, the profit seeking has really created some very degenerate ways in which we farm for chickens and how we farm pigs. Imagine how the virtuous pursuits will feed down into our food source systems.